I tried to summarize. They have requested me not to be academic at all. They request only case experience sharing. So let me start. Uh, start with this. Knowledge is acquiring the fact. Understanding is interpreting it. But the wisdom comes from applying it. So the only way I feel in, in medicine you can apply your knowledge is by digging <coughs> into your patient life. The more you know about your patient life, there's a higher chance that you can crack the code of their symptoms. Okay? So let me start by by the topics that I'm going to talk today. I'll try to share the experience, the case that I have regarding these for the non pulmonologist Sorry, it may be an easier case for you, but I'll try my best to make it practical for you so that you can use it there. Once again, I, in my practice, I always keep this in mind. If your asthma is not controlled, maybe it's not asthma in the first place. Always remember this dummy rule. Asthma usually more than 90% is easily controlled with the proper medication and proper adherence. So make sure I'm going to touch only uncontrolled. If you have a case that your <coughs> asthma is not controlled, your patient is complaining of wheezing, always start from the basic again. Recheck your diagnosis. Was your patient actually an asthma? Or it was just a pure wheezing case and they got treated as an asthma? Always recheck. I think education, you can go and read. Doctor has already described a lot about Gina 2022. So recheck. Number two, once you, once you think, yes, I'm sure it's asthma. I have not missed the diagnosis. The next question is, is there any other co-founding or is it other possible diagnosis on top? Number three is always recheck your adherence. As you comment that in, in your country there's a lot of problem with using the inhaler. Here also we have, but times are changing. The more education you give them, the more you focus on their hand, as you say, elderly. I'm show you a lot of cases that how how I crack their uncontrolled asthma. And the last two things is treat the comorbid and look for a trigger. Let me get straight away. My key message today I want you to take only for this slide. If you have a patient that is not controlling the asthma is still go either it's wheezing, is it coming from the upstream? I always teach my students. Dummy room, upstream or is it <laughs> Downstream, wheezing, where is it coming from? I'll tell you how. Is it focal wheezing? One sided wheezing? Or is it actually coming from both the sides of the lungs? These are two tricks. Chest x ray, look for hidden areas, especially mediastinum, hyla region, bronchitis, large airway compression. Pumi function says not only focus on bronchodilation response and all. Look for a sign of fixed airway obstruction. Okay? These are just the key. I think you go home, work on this, you will know the answer. CBC, just have a look at the CBC count. How's the eosinophilia? Is it a high EO profile or is it a low EO profile asthma patient? These all are small, small uh, tricks and tips that will help you deal with your uncontrolled asthma. Let's start with the first case. This case is a 39 years old patient treating uncontrolled asthma. I got consulted. The diagnosis was right. Inhalation techniques was good. But why is asthma not controlled? Re-examine the diagnosis again. Missing anything? Is it reason coming from all the lung or just focal? In this case, what happened is I auscultation and I say do the force expire <laughs> when you force expire I heard a fixed wheezing at the left main area these are not seen in normal x-ray it will always see from your physical examination so rule number one is it upstream or downstream if it's downstream is it generalized wheezing or is it focal wheezing this case is a focal wheezing I do the x-ray, review the x-ray, what I see was there was a faint reticulonodular infiltration here. Up 
the right upper lobe. And also in the x-ray, I start seeing the diaphragm elevation, the sign of bronchostenosis. Did the CT scan, here I found, there is a left main bronchus constrictor with some stenosis. You can see from this section, so when I did the endoscopy, it was a TB endobronchial, or we call it endobronchus TB, manifestation with a wheezing and cough. So this patient got treated for anti-TB and now she's back to normal. Luckily, she don't need a balloon dilatation to dilate her bronchus. Okay? So this is very common, especially in our country. Bangladesh, I, I, I feel TB is a lot, yeah? So keep an eye on this, okay? Okay, this is the first case. So are we clear with the first key message? Yes. Up or down? Focal or generalized? Next key. Now this is a nurse, 27 years old. Also received with a chronic cough and wheezing. What happened is, but this time she came with the absolute obstruction of the left lung. We call it total atelectasis. Okay? With a lung herniation sign. You see the, the, the right side? The right lung is herniated toward the left. It means there is a compensatory hyperaeration. So this case we went into a CT scan and bronchoscopy. It was a 100% occlusion of TB endobronchus. So she was then, we went for a balloon dilatation and start on anti-TB. She is back to normal. Now this nurse is working back again with us. Okay? So wheezing, is it a focal wheezing? Don't miss the focal wheezing. Ah. No, case 3, again, uncontrolled asthma, uncontrolled asthma, cough, despite medication, recheck your diagnosis. Uh, this patient came to the wheezing, it's a focal wheezing here. You can see the wheezing in the tracheal region and the, and the uh, junction of the carina. How do you do? You force expire and you start hearing. Okay, so what happened is, this is a main area of obstruction from, from a media cinema, Haila, I didn't know about it. Okay? She will wheeze when she lie down, she says. That's the trick. She don't wheeze in the day. She says, when I lie down, I start feeling something in my throat. And I could see some wee sound. Okay? So, physical examination is very important. So, this is a 22 years old. Again, coming with wheezing. X-ray day, I don't know what happened, but when I see the X-ray, there was a huge anterior mediastinoma. So when she sleeps, what happened? 20, well, when he sleeps, 22 years old, it compressed the trachea. So it caused wheezing, okay? Okay, this is a last week case. This is a very beautiful case. Last week, this this woman is a, she's a young woman. She's a deep sea diver. She came for me with a, throat fullness and multiple medication for GERD. She has been treating for GERD for the last past one year. Not improved at all. Zero percent change. So, again, I asked her, when is the wheeze? When do you feel? She said, it's not actual wheeze, but outside, she feels that something is obstructed here. She tried ICS, LABA, nothing changed. I did a spirometry. I see the sign of Expire, extra thoracic loop obstruction, partial obstruction. So I did the C, HRCT, inspire, expire phase. 24 years old lady, what is this? This is the inspire phase. But once you do the expire, force expire, the carina is collapsed. Collapsed and collapsed in the pattern of EDAC. It's called uh, expiratory dynamic airway collapse from the posterior membrane. I'll show you the video. Oh, sorry, can anybody help? Why is not coming here? It's protruding and it's almost obstructing. It's almost kissing the anterior wall. 
So this this is a feature of EDAC. In this kind of cases, it's either TBM or it's just EDAC. TBM is trachea bronchomalacia. But this feature is, anyway, all non pulmonologists need to understand is an uncontrolled wheezing is the, we use the examination to confirm. Okay, I'll show you. When I go in, you see the posterior, posterior is coming up so much. If I go down, it's even more, more obstruction. I go down again to the right carina, it's almost touching, almost collapsing. It's getting higher and higher. You see? I cannot pass the endoscope. It's getting higher. Now, this is the right side. It's, when I go inside, it's almost collapsing when she expires. Okay, this, so this is the right, the right, you can see it's, when it's expired, it's almost collapsing. Okay. So, so ending the first, So again, I'll okay. Again, now this is thirty-three years old woman. Again, amazing. So now, what you can see here? Can anybody show me what you see here in the X-ray? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can see this is a very easy one, right? You can see. Yeah. So look for this signs. Okay. Is it the up or is it the low? Tracheo. Obstruction is not uncommon. It's not uncommon. Especially in elderly, thyroid CA, lymphoma, is very common. And they come with a wheezing. Very common. So don't forget to look for these signs if you have uncontrolled asthma. Okay? Okay. This is a case of a 24 years old woman. Again, coming with an uncontrolled asthma. Revise was there. Everything was good. Adherence, everything was good. But the point is when I see the eosinophilia was above 1,500. Her case was almost 24%. So review the x-ray, there's a, some opacity here. So review her case, dig into her, her lifestyle. She is sleeping with the trees. She is fond of trees. So she, she, she has a tree pot in her room all over. So the first question that comes is aspergillus, APA, right? So what I did was, I, I do the total IgE level, it's very high. Did the bronchoscopy, and I see the cheese light here. We did the biopsy, it's a pure aspergillus fumigatus. So from the case of uncontrolled asthma, it's been resolved now. Yeah. Again, again, uncontrolled asthma, look for differential diagnosis, the most common that go closely, it's called bronchitis, <coughs> okay? You will also read asthma bronchitis overlap. It comes together, but, but. Usually, asthma bronchitis, you see the timeline. Asthma will come first and then bronchitis later, usually in my practice. But once you review the history, it has always been bronchitis. And it's not asthma, it's bronchitis. Which one comes first? You have to dig the story. So this case, bronchitis comes first. And bronchitis is never, I don't know, it was never investigated by a pulmonologist. So at the end, we investigated her bronchitis. It was a, a NTM, non-tuberculous mycobacterium. Okay, so she got treatment. The last case here, so what is this? It's a very common, treated with uncontrolled asthma. A male. And you review the case again, review the history taking physical examination, you see the barrel chase, x ray, you see the hyper air, basal emphysema. So this is classic of COPD. So he is a candidate for Lama, not ICS. So once switch to Lama, symptoms control. Start rehab for COPD, symptoms control. Okay? So just, just make sure you come back to the first basic. Was your diagnosis correct? Okay. This is a lady. 
treated with uncontrolled asthma, still not, not improving. Review the history, she complained, not so long, not so stuff. And she complained, anosmia. She cannot, she cannot smell anything for the past two, three years. So the first thing suspect is nasal polyposis, NP, right? Did the rigid. There's a lot of NP. So we start treatment here. Either uh, INS or either uh, prednisolone, okay? But luckily she responds well with just INS, okay? And add more as well. Everything back to normal. So asthma rule, always treat the comorbid as well. The most common comorbid, I think in your country also, allergic rhinitis, because a lot of dust, okay? Don't forget to do some rhinoscopy at least to see whether there's any polyposis or not, okay? Okay, uh, last two weeks, I have an elderly, 82 years old, uncontrolled asthma for two years, maximum medication. So I reviewed the case again. Uh, I did the rigid, I found the aspergillus in her nose. I did the CT scan, aspergillus was in the sinus. So I sent to the ENT to evacuate. So everything was good. IT levels was very high. Now she's back to normal. I taped down the ICS lava just by controlling the comorbid. So look for this thing, okay? It's very common. And this is a funny incident. Again, this lady, elderly, came to me with an uncontrolled asthma, uncontrolled allergic rhinitis. You can see the medication, full of basket. And she said, I have been running around whole hospital. My asthma is not controlled. So what I saw from the basket was this thing. Do you know what is this in your country you have? Do, do, you know? Yeah. yeah. You do for prayers? Yes. So she do every time. One day, many times a day. Yes. I said, the problem is not the asthma. The problem is the trigger. You still have the indoor pollution. These are pollution, pollutants and you inhale it all the day. It will trigger your asthma. If you already have a bronchial hyper-responsive state, it's very easy, okay? Anyway, so these are deep, deep into your patient's life, you will see a lot of, in my practice, I hardly have uncontrolled asthma. Not that I am very good formula, no. But I always come back to basic. Was my diagnosis right? Adherence was good or not? Trigger is there? Any, any co-founding disease, I hardly reach up to biology. Only one case, one case I use biology. Okay, so I just want to share because our country is a, a low to middle income country. Nobody can afford biology that much, right? So the main thing we ask to answer your question, sir, ICS is the mainstay of treatment. It's the only education you can educate. A lot of hospitals, I'm sad to say, they focus more on diagnosis and treatment. There's a very less room for patient education. So I'm not sure, but if you can reverse the equation, spend more time on education, it's easier. Easier to handle your case. And don't waste time using the oral medication for your asthma. It has always been proven that ICS, LABA or ICS uh, plus SABA ne, wins over the race on the long run. Because if you let your patient, as doctors say, takes on medication, oral medication all the time without resolving their limiting belief, at the end they will turn into uncontrolled asthma stage. We call it irreversible asthma. So it's a lot of headache for doctors. Okay? So we're here with asthma. Are we okay now? So two rules. When you have uncontrolled asthma, is it up or is it down? Okay? And number one, number two, is it focal wheezing or is it generalized wheezing? Generalized wheezing, easy. Heart failure, many things you can see. Okay? Okay, let me go into the next topic is bronchitis, but I will focus only on non-CF. Non-CF means non-cystic fibrosis. Why I focus more on bronchitis? Because bronchitis is a burden for our country. I'm sure doctor will agree. Bronchitis is a burden because unlike asthma, nobody talks about bronchitis. 
there's no medication, there's no cure. And patients only travel to just take regular antibiotics. So it is a very sad story for, for all the pulmonologists. So patient will come once a year with hemoptysis, sometimes twice a year, sometimes thrice or four times a year, sometimes massively. So these are messages I really want to focus on bronchitis because I feel it's a role for us. Bronchitis you will go read yourself, okay? But I will always say that once you want to diagnose diagnosis, you will need to have symptoms and the imaging criteria, both, okay? Patient coming with prudent sputum all the time, coughing and you physical there's a lot of <coughs> crackle sounds all the that's what critics is. Confirm with the imaging. Okay? On the opposite side, you will have normal patient but x-ray you find a bronchitis. It's a different chapter. Okay? So always suspect if patient coming with you with chronic cough, bronchitis in group of increasing age, especially women, asthma, COPD that's uncontrolled. Look for bronchitis. Or patient coming with recurrent sinusitis, rhinitis, with cough, you know, upper and lower airway. Look for bronchitis. Once you find a bronchitis, don't just treat bronchitis. A lot of, lot of my experience, I feel patient diagnosed bronchitis coming for, uh, you know, monthly azithromycin or uh, three months uh, fluoroquinolones, you know. But device, is it tuberculosis? Is it non-tuberculosis or is it fungal? Microbiology in bronchitis is very important. You have to surveillance the sputum of the patient. Usually literature says once a year. I do every three months. In my severe bronchitis, I tell patient, send me your samples every three to four months. Let me keep track of your sputum. Because usually we have pseudomonas, right? And we are, we are very concerned of pseudomonas resistance. Usually they are very susceptible to ciprofloc, rivofloxacin. No? But once they start alert, uh, once they start having a drug resistance, it's going to be a problem for them. So sputum very important. Condition that will predispose, what caused them to have bronchitis at the first place? As for childhood infection. Childhood immunodeficiency, AIDS, frequent skin infection, any autoimmune. I will tell you the example. Okay. As I say, if if there's a just X-ray imaging, but no symptoms, no more treatment. But so you're disturbing me, sir. In the checkup, you will find a lot of bronchitis in your annual checkup. But if you see patient have no problem, don't tell them uh, no problem. You will tell them that there's a high chance of bronchitis. <coughs> she needs to come for regular surveillance. Keep an eye. Nothing serious, but keep an eye. Once you, there's a sign of bronchitis, keep an eye. Don't, don't just discharge your patient. Despite they don't have symptoms. Because the early you can track hold, the long run is better. Okay? So bronchic in the young. Sputum surveillance, goal of treatment. This is the hardest part for pulmonologists. Patient will come down the countryside to tell you, sir, I have traveled all the country, cure me. The only thing we pulmonologists can say, sorry, there's no cure. You cannot cure. It's the hardest chapter in our life. There's no cure. You've got to live with it. But all we can do is minimize the exacerbation per year. Minimize your your disturbed quality of life, okay? Anyway, let me start with the first first scenario. Once patient coming with chronic cough and you see the fingers and there's a clubbing, there's a sign of, of advanced bronchitis, okay? This is a typical case of bronchitis, okay? Bronchitis is a bronchial dilatation. I hope you all know, right? So it's a permanent damage. <laughs> let me start with the first case. This case I already tell you. So she has been treated for asthma, but finally she has a focal wheezing, review x-ray and CT, she has a bronchitis up there. Once you have bronchitis, rule number one is look for treatable infection, that is TB and TM fungal. This, when I look for, I found this is a TB. So she got treatment. 
Number two, this is a, a middle woman age. Bronchitis, recurrent bronchitis, and there's a lot of mucus impaction in the bronchus. Okay, these are called mucus impaction. She cannot always put them in the morning, green color, yellow color, always, always. So, the point is, her sputum surveillance was also okay. But why not improve? The rehabilitation also also okay. So look for treatable infection. So what I did was sputum culture for fungus, still not. Still patient complaining. I did the bronchoscope, I did the biopsy, and the results was as special as species. Okay? So she was treated with uh, itraconazole, okay? So she's back to normal, bronchitis is controlled. Okay? Have a read about uh, this microbiology of bronchitis. The next case, this is a young American guy, 64 guy, 64 years old. It's also bronchitis, not good. Do the CT scan. So this is a typical light middle low, bronchitis. Okay? So did the CT scan. The CT scan was bronchitis and there's a consolidation mass. So we did the biopsy, do the bronchoscope and the result was, see, the bar was also negative. PCR was also negative. Culture was also negative. But finally, when we wait for uh, one and a half month, it was non-tuberculous mycobacterium. It's called NDM. So we treat it back to normal. So please, please, this is a key message for bronchitis. Once you have a patient with chronic cough, asthma, COPD, anything, and you feel the lung is it's called crackle sound, retro sound, look for bronchitis. Once you see bronchitis, ask yourself, is is a permanent damage or something active infection is inside? Active infection, TB, NTM, asper. You can consult your pulmonologist of your country, what's the basic microbiology predominance in your country? Look for treatable infection. Not only treatable infection, look for associate immunodeficiency. Patients don't have bronchitis out of a no reason. There has to be some hidden reason. Usually it's an immune, immune that is low. It's autoimmune, especially in elderly. So bronchitis is actually a, is a big basket here. But if you stop here, you will never ever connect the dots. So don't stop at bronchitis. Just at least for the first year when you meet patient, try to connect. Is there something I'm missing? Is it just working or is it something add-on? You go back, you master the skill, you will know how to take history, how to do. Let me show you this case. This is a woman, 46 years old, a restaurant owner, came with a chronic cough for the last four to five years, progressive. Now, when she meet me, she's 51. Physical exam, clinical was highly prognosis, productive cough, cough all the mo morning. Physical examination was <coughs> bronchic. X-ray seen bronchitis. Also decreased lung volume. So what I did was, I see her hand. Her hand was what? Stiff. This is a typical physical examination of rheumatoid arthritis. I did the SRCT. It's a bronchitis, but it's a typical of NSIP pattern. So this this uh, this patient underwent uh, rheumatology treatment. X-ray was back to normal. Okay. So bronchitis doesn't come on its own. Look for autoimmune disease. Next patient. This also came with a chronic cough. Treat as bronchitis. Looks at her finger. What do you see? Yeah. It's not only clubbing, this is called sclerodactyly. It's a, it's a classic sign of systemic sclerosis. So we did the HRCT. Okay? It's a interstitial lung disease. So you treat this, this will be under control. It won't resolve, but it will be under control. Are we clear here? And this is a 19 years old woman coming with a cuff. So with a focal velcro sound. Okay? So this is a focal bronchitis in a 19 years old. When you feel or you see a patient young age, especially women, female, young age, 
consult, talk to their family. Anybody else in the family? Because there are a few family disease runs. Okay? Or is it just a childhood infection? Okay? If it's childhood infection, usually related to mycobacterium. These are burnies. She is a burnies case. So she had a prior infection, a mycobacterium infection back then. Okay? But always remember when you feel the age is too young, consult pulmonologist. Or at least you can check for immunodeficiency, HIV, check the absolute lymphocyte count, see whether she has an immunodeficiency stage or not, uh, recurrent skin infections and all. Okay? Okay, this case, uh, this I suspect William Campbell syndrome. This is a 76 years old woman, elderly, on a wheelchair, coughing for the entire 40 years, coronal cough. So this is a typical bronchitis case, it's a central bronchitis. Okay? You do CT, you see a lot of damage in the airway, also some consolidation, a lot of pus. Again, when you see bronchitis, what do you do? You look for treatable cause. You look for hidden immune deficiency. Is an autoimmune, did all the investigation negative. So I suspect her, I suspect she has a, this uh, William Campbell. Okay? But anyway, she's already 76. No rung transplant. I cannot do the low back also. Nowadays, I do low back. If there's a focal bronchitis, I send to CBT, do the low back. Finish the job, don't waste time. Cut it. It's just a, uh, it's just like appendix in your body. You don't use it anymore. So a lot of damage, bronchitis, and recurrent hemoptysis, recurrent infection, send to pathologist, consult for lobectomy or wet resection. Cartipedo. You understand? Okay, so bronchitis, you, you get the point. So when you see bronchitis, do you stop? No. What you can help the bronchitis case, find the cause, any treatable cause. Most easy is a TB. If you treat, you stop the bronchitis. If you don't treat, it spread. Bronchitis spread. Okay? So the lifestyle of patient is gone. Okay. The third chapter will be the what I feel is a very common, especially in the is a bowel or abdomen related cuff. Or I can put it is associated with GERD, reflux. Okay? So my key message for you, if you have a patient with chronic cough, especially elderly, okay, and you are in, you say it's not coming from the nose, it's not coming from the tonsillitis, not coming from the lungs, you have done all the checkup, everything is clear, next chapter, look for the abdomen. You know why? It's very common now. I think it's going to take over in the next 10 years because lifestyle has changed. People are sleeping late. People are eating very quick. People are lying down while eating and they are taking a lot of ice, alcohol and all. So these things are going to come. When it comes, it's going to affect the lung. And patient will come with irritant cough, dry cough. Okay? It can either come during when you eat or at least two to three hours after you eat. Okay? So it's very common in the elderly now. I have a lot of increasing case in elderly. Okay, usually relate to OCVA, vocal cord palsy, post intubation, anything, I'll put it simply, anything that can have a risk that the vocal cord will not close during eating, keep that in mind. Your patient is coughing, especially during eating, eating and coughing. <coughs> Elderly, also in the scenario, he has a intubation history, Radiation history, malignant history, surgery history, stroke history. Keep an eye whether the vocal cord is not closing at the right time when they eat or not. Very common. Okay? You suspect if you work up already that, okay, I have done all my best to work up the upper cause. Still, my patient is still complaining of cough. Or you think it's asthma. You think it's cough variant you treat. Patient is getting better, but not 100%. Maybe there's an add-on. Good. Because it comes together these days. Okay? Number five. Diet have lifestyle modification is dirty. Not medication. Medication will help, but on the long run, 
if you encourage patients to modify their diet, chew slower, eat mindfully, eat before the bedtime, that will be much better. My wife is laughing. Okay, writing cross copy is helping. It's very helpful. Because these girls you cannot diagnose easily. There has to be some proof, you know. So what we do is, we do the radicoscopy. You see the erythema, inflame, erythema process, vocal cord swelling. ENT will tell you this is a reflux case. So it's easier for you. But still if you don't find any typical, I do is CT scan. I will show you. Okay. This patient coming with a cuff. I think anybody can tell. It's easy. As I taste, a lot of fluid pushing up the diaphragm, irritates the cuff. You did the thoracosynthesis, cuff improved, everything is okay. This is easy, right? Now this. This is an 87 years old woman coming with 6 years of chronic cuff. Not improving at all. So what happened is, Physical examination, lungs is clear, nose is clear. 87 years old, what do you expect? Allergy? No, not at this age. Because this age, usually the age of low allergy response. So look for the GI. For what I did to a simple x-ray, I see there's a lot of lucency in the retrochronic region. So this is a typical case of hydrogenia. It's very common. When you eat elderly, the diaphragm loosens with age. When you eat, you start having cough. They don't complain typical chest pain that we read in the book. They don't complain like that. They become with cuff. Okay? Okay, this is the second case. Also chronic cuff. Uncontrolled. So I did the CT scan. I see there's a hiatal hernia. There's a, okay? If not typical, you go for indirect sign. That is esophageal dilatation. Okay? Sometimes you don't see the typical uh, stomach in your thorax. You don't see but go for indirect sign. Esophageal dilatation. This is the trachea. Once your esophagus is, is dilated, equal to your trachea or bigger than your trachea, suspect there is some motility disorder. This patient is a 91 years old. Finally, diagnosis I made was primary ecclesia. My pronunciation is good. <laughs> Mass the Bangladeshi. <laughs> I'm coming to Bangladeshi too. Okay, sorry. Coming back. So this is an achalasia case, okay? Achalasia means the esophagus is not, is not pushing down the food. So what happens is when you eat, food gets stuck here. And always remember, patient cuff not only from chest, not only from nose. Esophagus also have a cuff receptor. People always forget. Esophagus also have a cuff receptor. Esophagus also trigger your cuff center. So, okay? So this is Akhalaji, 91 years old now. If not typical dilatation, look for this. It's called paratrachea lucency. Okay, look for this sign. This I show case to the uh, medical students. Chronic cuff, 60 years old. I said, look here. We did the CT scan, this is the paratracheal esophageal. This is a case of systemic sclerosis. Early manifestation of Crest syndrome. Okay, so her cuff was good now. Okay, beside functional, what I said was functional. Always look for mechanical obstruction. Mechanical obstruction means something is there. It's obstructing. In this case, chronic cuff in 51 years old, male. What do you see here? It's some radio opaque, something mass-like. Retrocardic. It's very common, okay? Oh, but then the CT scan is a mask here. So he, this is a case of CA esophagus, not coming with the esophagus symptoms, but coming with cuff symptoms. Okay? This is a 50 years old male, same, coming with cuff. Lot of fine nodules and reticulations, but retrocardic, something is there. So again, this case. Is a CA esophagus in 50 years old male, metastasis to lung. So, key message for for cuff: if you look up, lungs, no, look for down. Start taking, okay? Have a have a glimpse of idea, possible or not. 
give trial of motility medication like uh, I, I use uh, domperidone, motilium, ganatam, anything prokinetic agent you can use, whatever match in your country. Okay? Focus on constipation, laxative. Trial for two weeks, you will know better or not. Not 100%, 50%, 60%, you will know if you are on the right track or not. Okay. Pulmonary infection. You have a break for a while. Anybody wants to ask anything for now? Okay. Let's head on to pulmonary infection. For me, infection, I'll be touching a few topics post COVID, non resolving pneumonia. Non resolving pneumonia because it's not pneumonia in the first place. It's not improving pneumonia because it's not pneumonia in the first place. Okay? Some lungs abscess, some empyema, thoraxis, loculate, atypical pneumonia, and thick cavity. I have selected these topics because I think it will be very benefit for non pulmonologists to, to, to take a grips idea. Let me start with this. COVID. COVID, you, you can think how bad? Very bad? Yeah. Here also very bad during, during Delta. This is a typical Delta case. The 40 years old male. Okay? ICU. Profound ground gas. No? Impending respiratory failure on high flow. Okay? On high dose steroid. So, after a month, back to normal. Not even three months from dead end to the normal end. Okay? Now who knows and why such a fast recovery depends on immune. Okay? Second case is a third, uh, this is a 36 years old. Delta, severe pneumonia, turned into fibrosic change. Not fibrotic change, but lung damage. I won't say fibrosis, I'll use word lung damage. Which July last 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 year, May this year, one year this guy took to recover. The previous case was one month. This was one year to recover. So what 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 can I say from this? Actually, I have many cases, but I'm just showing you two typical cases. So all I can say post COVID lung damage. Uh, I don't jump into a conclusion telling people that sorry, there is no reversible. I will always say, let the time tell you. Don't lose hope as long as patient is symptoms free. Patient x-ray might look like this, but he can exercise, he can walk with minimal desaturation. Like baseline, he can be like 96, but when he walks or one flight of stairs, it comes out to 92, but when sick, rapid recovery in one minute, three minutes, tell them don't worry, wait. Then you have to balance case by case, do they need uh, immunosuppressive, do they need steroids to help, okay? I go by the symptom base. As long as symptoms is good, I go by symptom base. Let the body recovery. So I evaluate up to three months. Depends. Initially, one and a half month, then two months, then three months gap to see the trend. How many percentage X-ray is improving? If it's improving without me adding any steroids or immunosuppressive, then there's a high chance that patient will self-recovery. So this is a one-year self-recovery. I didn't give any steroid. I didn't give any immunosuppressive. Okay. Ah. On the other hand, this is another case. This is a military. 61 years old, post Delta, it has already been one year. He has gone through permanent damage, also cystic change in the lung, also pneumothorax. Many times coming from pneumothorax, okay? And this is the last x-ray. I met him uh, two weeks ago, still in this stage, one year already. But he denies any immunosuppressive because he don't want to take risk of any uh, opportunity infection. So, but now with this x-ray he can walk on the road 1 to 2 kilometers. Oxygen saturation coming down to 92. Resting 96. This x-ray. So I say okay, I will keep your symptoms in mind. I want plus only the x-ray. Okay? 
Okay, if symptoms is improving, let's retire this item. But but if option would have been there earlier, I would have started on immunosuppressive. But this case was a late case that visited me. Anyway, the next is a pneumonia, non-resolving pneumonia. I think you will have this in your practice. Patient admit with pneumonia, you give antibiotic already, four days, five days, fever is very high, is not coming down. Despite you stepping up the antibiotic, you know, broad antibiotic, you give meropinam, carbapinam, tasosin, still fever not coming down. Sputum culture is not yielding you anything. And the x-ray is increasing consolidation. This are called non-resolving pneumonia, okay? Depend on the situation, on your settings, on your hospitals. I wait only for five days, maximum. If five days, no improvement, I go inside. Use the bronchoscope, take the biopsy, and come out, okay? This case also, it's a non-resolving pneumonia. I did the CT scan, it was full of consolidation and necrosis. So we went in, take a biopsy, and the result was organizing pneumonia. Culture was negative, so I put on steroids. She is back to normal. And so uh, what, what, what is the uh, organizing or, or, pneumonia? Organizing, organizing pneumonia. pneumonia is such actually the pneumonia is already gone, but the body is overreacting. I'm putting in some easy words. Inflammation is overreacting. Just steroid. Just steroid, and it's back to normal. This is one week of steroid from the. Uh, so what I, I, I want to show you, non-resolving pneumonia, sometimes bacteria already cure. The body is hyper, okay, hyper-reacting. It's either inflammation, post-infection, inflammation and all. But you cannot confirm. You have to do bronchoscope inside. Then then only if anybody can have guts to give steroid. Fever is very high, okay? What about uh, viral causes? Because you, you, you don't have any, you, you will not find anything in culture. So, no. Uh, Only pathology. So, how you excluded by any sort of virus, atypical virus, or we don't know any uh, thing like that? Virus? Yes. Virus? Oh. Virus doesn't come focal consolidation. Usually, it's virus is. Virus to usually bilateral. 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 Clinical, sir. Virus to usually bilateral. And, and in virus, you will see it. Uh, in, in this organizing pneumonia, they will tell you. The, the structure is typical of the organizing pneumonia. Okay? Ah, anyway, next case. This is also a non-resolving pneumonia. Treated with antibiotic high dose. Still, consolidation not improved. Okay? 86 years old, female. CT scan, consolidation like. Okay? Do the bronchoscopy, non-small cell carcinoma. High fever. Okay? So, as I said, Non-resolving pneumonia, I feel bronchoscope is the key. You wait five days, not improve, consult your pulmonologist. Okay? If your fever is very high. Cancer can also come with very high fever. Because these kind of cancer, sometimes they have obstructive pneumonitis. When the cancer is so big, it obstructs. So all the phenom, all the mucus, bacteria, superimposed infection, high fever comes. Okay? Okay, non-resolving pneumonia, key message. Five days, consult your pulmonologist. It can be anything, okay? Or it can not be pneumonia. It's not pneumonia in the first place, okay? This case is a 66 years old, coming with a high fever and lung abscess. Very big abscess. But sputum also cannot, negative. But the question is, how do you want to treat? I think, for these kind of cases, usually you go for antibacterial, high dose, okay, broad first, but don't forget sputum PCR DB. It's very important. Sputum culture DB, okay. Don't forget to do HIV test. If HIV positive, look for look for a modified MP, atypical pathogens, okay. Uh, when you see such a big abscess and the patient clinical is coming like three months and having a, a cachexia, I cannot eat, elderly three months, minimal cough. Remember this, elderly, minimal cough, but three months of cachexia syndrome, 
slowly losing weight, slowly reducing appetite, check the oral cavity. This can be anaerobic aspiration. Okay, you read about anaerobic my, uh, lung abscess. It is very common. I think in your country also very common. Okay, anaerobic, no problem, easy to treat, but difficult to diagnose because sputum you cannot go for anaerobic culture. Rarely you can use. Okay, because you said sputum is always going to be no culture. Because for anaerobic you have special plates. You have special anaerobic culture set. Okay. Okay. Luckily, this case I treat antibiotic, not responding. Luckily, sputum PCR came back positive for mycobacterium tuberculosis. HIV was negative. Uh, he is not into immunodeficiency state. Treated him for one and a half year. This is an extensive TB with TB empyema and TB abscess. It breaks also. So after one and a half year, he is back to normal. Weight gain now. Okay? So don't lose hope. Okay, the next is uh, again, this is a massive pleural effusion. Here I use ultrasound very often. We call it thoracic ultrasound. So it's also very good as compared to CT, not for the OPD case, okay? I, I also suggest non pulmonologists start using ultrasound for your chest case, especially effusion case, very good. It's very cost effective, it helps a lot, okay? This typical case of empyema, when I tap, it's a cloudy, milky, put the ICD. But this is was supposed to be a empyema thoracic, but it turns out to be a cancer. You, you passed away a few days later. Okay? So, next case is loculate diffusion. You will also find a case with a loculate diffusion. It's only in one side, in one pocket, you know? And you might not have an intervention to tap for you. I am not sure in, in your country how many hospitals there's available to uh, emergency tap for you or intervention. Because loculate needs some skills. Not everybody can do. Loculate, you need ultrasound or some pulmonologist to make sure this, the needle is in the right pocket. Okay? Because if it is in the wrong pocket, pneumothorax, high risk of death. So, anyway, this case is a middle aged man. Chronic alcoholism, coming with fever, alcoholism, and loculate diffusion. Don't forget anaerobic. Alcoholism comes with a micro aspiration. When they get drunk, they sleep, they micro aspirate all the time. And they come with lung infection, okay? So, he was treated and he was back to normal, okay? Loculate was gone. Didn't tap. Didn't tap. Okay, this is also another atypical case. Coming with a chronic cuff, he cannot lie down. Once he lie down, purulent material comes up. He is a post-traumatic C-spy case. He is on a, on a wheelchair, cannot move, C-spine injury, paraplegia, coming from chronic cuff. Treated for one year, no response. Sometimes response, sometimes no response. So when I first consult, I noticed something here. The right heart border was not clear. There is some opacity here. So did the CT scan, it was a consolidation crime. Did the bronchoscope, it was a foamy turbid secretion. The pathology came back, it was an actinomycosis. Actinomycosis, if you found in poor oral hygiene, aspiration, frequency, okay? He was on uh, treatment for one year, now back to normal. Okay? So, non resolving pneumonia, not only look for HIV, look for atypical scenario like poor oral hygiene, chronic aspiration, alcoholism, this will help you with the clue. Okay? And sometimes you need bronchoscope. Because why? Non-resolving pneumonia and atypical bacterial infection, sometimes you need prolonged antibiotic. Cannot go with two weeks, three weeks, no. Sometimes you need six months. Pen B, penicillin B, six months, sometimes. Okay? Okay. The next case is, uh, again, lung infection, but this time coming with a cavity. You can see he came with a cavity lung here, hidden here, but high fever. The cavity was thick. By room thick cavity, you suspect cancer. Whenever there is a thick cavitary mass, cancer is a primary suspect. 
did the bronchoscope. The, the pathology was granuloma. Again, I was in doubt whether it's a hidden cancer and TB, both or not. Luckily, the PCR was back. He was actually TB. Treated him and he was back to normal. Okay? So, this case I just want to tell you not all thick MD have a cancer MD. It can also be TB. I'm sure in your country there's a lot of TB as well. Again, chemistry, same here. This is also a TB case. Okay? Okay, so for me, infection, my key message for you, especially on resolving, it may be not pneumonia. Look for something else. Or it may be post pneumonia, like on, like immune hyperstate, what you call organizing pneumonia. Sometimes it needs steroid. But to confirm, you need pathology, bronchoscopy. Okay? Number four, aspiration. Always look for aspiration. Silent aspiration in cloning alcohol people, elderly, paraplegia, huh? they can manifest with anaerobic, they can manifest with actinomycosis, some rare, rare. The only way you can know is you keep high suspect of index in mind. Then only you can cure. Otherwise, they will run around antibiotic for the last two, three years, no improvement. Okay? Any question from here? Okay, I'll go ahead. Hemophysis. I'm sure this is also very common questions in your practice. People coming with blood, coughing blood, some spot blood, some big blood, some massive blood. Okay? So, my tricks for you all is when there's a bleeding, look for common sign. Is it a focal bleeding or is it coming from general bleeding? Clinical will tell. Physical examination will help. Clinical is nose coming big from this side, history of epithaxis. Physical examination, there's a, a wound in the in the nose. It's a very most common area is the nose. Then in the throat, okay? Then in the trachea. Is it the upper or lower airway? Try. Lower airway, if there's an active bleeding, at least when you ask out, there will be something abnormal for you to hear. So keep an eye. When you ask out the patient, what I do in my practice now is, I sit, I tell the patient to stand. Turn your back, I start upper, upper, lower, lower, middle, middle, and then I turn upper, upper, lower, lower, middle, middle. It's easiest, okay? And you don't miss out the quadrants, okay? I'm not sure, are you in a habit of auscultation or not since COVID? Many have stopped auscultating their patients. But if you have cross over those stages, I suggest you go back, start auscultating again. Okay? Okay. Uh, this is a case, uh, I want to tell you, this is a massive hemoptysis. This is a post-TP with a destroyer run. So, every time he goes to the hospital, he gets a transamine, it is from your back lung, it's coming from inside. Yeah? But it's coming more and more, more and more. So don't trust what you see. I did the CT scan and I did the endoscopy. The blood is not coming from here. It's just coming from the trachea and the upper airway, here. It's called endobronchial dilatate this year. From post-infection, post-TB, post-intubation, whatever it is. But the treatment is easy once you find the bleeding spot. You use the argon, you stop the bleed. You stop the bleed, there's no bleed. This is not to be blamed anymore. But every time he bleeds, this. So don't, my key message from this case is don't blame the old scar of your symptoms, of your patient's symptoms. The patient will have the old scar. And every time they come with a symptom, don't blame the old scar. Just for a chance, if it's coming so often, again and again, give him the benefit of doubt, investigate for him. Have a look, tell your pulmonologist, have a look into the trachea. Is there any stoppable bleeding site or not? If it's a possible stoppable bleeding site, you stop, his lifestyle and quality of life will, will differ. Okay? Okay, the next case which I got published here was a rare case, very rare case, hardly. Also, this is a young man in the 30s. 
coming with a recurrent hemoptysis. Investigate, rhino, laryngo, CT scan, all negative. Every time he gets uh, transamine, supportive medication. Every time he'll be blamed. It's a old scar from your old scar or some uh, capillaritis. Maybe you cough so hard, but it cannot be because you cough a lot, fresh blood. So I give him the benefit of doubt, do the surveillance, bronchoscope surveillance, but I use narrow band imaging. Narrow band imaging, Dr. Tinos, we use uh, another mode in the bronchoscope to look for. So what I found is a cherry spot, flatten. Okay, these are called telangic cases here. It's a very, very rare case. It's, it, it's called endobronchial telangic case here. So this case was sent for ABC and uh, Argon. All was good. Okay, building stop, quality of life back to normal. So give the benefit of doubt to your patient. Don't blame the old scar. Okay, this came with a hemoptysis. As I said, look for the sign. Hemoptysis, but the lung was. <laughs> yeah, it can be from the lower airway, not the upper airway. So when I did the x ray, 60, what, 69 years old woman, this doesn't look like bronchitis. This looks like something fishy, especially adenocarcinoma. Did the CT scan, it was a destroyed lung. At first, I think it's uh, tuberculosis, but tuberculosis, so much patient is still walking. Cannot be. Disseminated TB, patient will be very conjecture. So, did the bronchoscopy, it was adenocarcinoma. Okay? Adenocarcinoma. I think, I'm not sure she just passed away because we referred her out. Okay. My key message for hemoptysis that I always see when I consult is sometimes non pulmonologists miss the hidden area. That is something, but it's in the hidden area that non pulmonologists usually don't think. Okay, just to remind you. The most common is the apical region. Okay, apical region like this radiology, they mark something is not here, looks like a mass here. But it's easier. You do apical lordotic view. It's clean. Chapter close. This is a false alarm. Okay? Okay? Just do the apical lordotic view. Okay. Now this. Here. This case also came with hemoptysis. So well, something is there. Here. It's not a rip hit anymore. It's not a false alarm. Did the CT scan? The cancer was hidden behind the clavicle head. So this is a 86, 82 years old uh, British guy. Did the bronchoscopy, adenocarcinoma, lived for two years. This also hemoptysis. Usually, if non pulmonologists they will just say, hey, it's normal, it's normal, nothing. Look for hidden area here, especially behind the clavicle. If you can see, if you are not sure, compare both the sides. Even if you are not sure, after comparing, go for apical lordotic view. Just to make sure you are not missing out anything in the apex. Okay? So this case, if you can see roughly, you say it's normal. But here, yeah, it's hidden there. Okay? Okay. Who, who can tell me? Is it hemoptysis? It's a normal. No, no. Yeah. Normal. <laughs> not normal, yeah. Something is hidden here. Okay, in the CD scan here, retro. The, the second hidden area is a retrocratic region. This is the region that usually miss. Okay, patient coming with hemoptysis. X ray, normal, normal, no. You look here, second you look here. It's called retrocratic. Okay, it's a very common miss area. Keep practicing. Okay. Okay. This is also hemoptysis. Clavicle, clean. Retrocardiac, clean. Lungs, clean. Hyla, also clean. Okay? 
look for the fourth, uh, third hidden area is here. Okay, here, especially the other side. If you can see, there's an opacity here. Okay, yeah. There's no here. You cannot see. Can I see it? Okay, sorry. There's an opacity here. Here. Okay. You see my mouse? No? No. Opacity is here. Base of the right. Yeah. So with the CT, confirm opacity here. Okay? So the fourth hidden area, I told already. Ah. Patient coming with hemoptysis at least once to two times a year, if you don't find anything, like this case, hemoptyphus is 62 years old. You don't find anything here, hidden area here, here. You don't find, no problem. Keep observe the patient. Interval X-ray helps. You see this 62, 63, 64. After three years of close surveillance, you start seeing something popping up. This is a mess. CLR. Okay? Okay. Same here. So what I want to say is follow-up x-ray is important. If you have a hemoptysis, keep on coming again and again. If you cannot do CT in your country, at least x-ray is very important. Okay? Okay? This is, this is a police officer. Again coming here, hidden here. If you can see. Okay? Bronchoscopy is a adenocarcinoma. Okay, this is a 34 years old. Very sad story for me. For me, he's just 34. Just married for two years. Bone pain, hemoptysis. It's hidden here. And some nodules, small, small nodules. You do the CT, the big one is here. Okay, and bone pain is from the metastasis to bone. He is an advanced, advanced adenocarcinoma. 34 years old. <laughs> this is a dentist. Came with a cuff, hemoptysis, and bone pain. Bone pain, fracture. Suspect pathologic fracture. How can a person cuff so hard that a bone ribs fracture? It has to be some pathologic fracture. <coughs> Take exams. Bone fracture, pathologic fracture, one of the most common is multiple myeloma in female, elderly, okay? Do the skull and zoom in the fracture. It's an osteolytic fracture. It's called pathologic fracture. Ask your radiologist, does this fracture looks like a pathologic fracture or not? If pathologic fracture, go for biopsy or start investigating. This case, I, the second I did was a film skull. It's a punch out lesion. This is a classic case of multiple myeloma. Okay? This is a 19 years old. 19 years, 1 9. Uh, 18 years old. Advanced can cancer. Passed away. Okay, that's a sad story. This is a, a male, I think 64, 65, came cachexia on wheelchair. Okay? They say it's a cancer. Non pulmonologists will suspect cancer in this age, so much in the lung, give your patient the benefit of doubt because this is the first time you met, after six months he is back to normal, it's just a TB case, do the bronchoscopy, sputum was negative, do the bronchoscopy, it's not cancer, treat TB, okay, this case also was same suspect, cancer, okay. This is a 80 something years old. Okay? Sputum was also made. Go inside, did the bronchoscopy, granuloma positive, PCR TB positive. Fit for TB is back to normal. So bronchoscopy helps. Okay? When you see bad images of the lungs, don't panic. Don't jump into cancer all the time. Consult your pulmonologist, get a biopsy. Thank you.